Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Hebrew Thought here. And um, I know I've been away a while, but uh, I found a very interesting article. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am um, I am very interested in uh, genetics and, and history and, and things of that nature. As you can tell by some of the posts that uh, are on the channel here. But um, I've recently been really researching uh, my personal family background, my genetics. Uh, as you can tell, I'm African-American. Um, but uh, here is an interesting article uh, that I found in my research. Uh, and it goes to the question of where do we, and when I say we, I mean the people who currently uh, make up the African-American population, who are the people that we descend from in Africa and where do those people come from? Now, for the longest time, they would tell you, you know, uh, West Africans uh, and uh, Bantu speakers uh, in Central Africa are primarily, Central and parts of Western Africa are primarily who we descend from. But, and, and where do those people come from? Well, we may be getting a clearer understanding of this uh, information. Uh, this is from a article on live science. It says ghost population of humans discovered in ancient Africa. Uh, this is the first time researchers have done an in-depth analysis of ancient DNA in Western Central Africa. Uh, during the Stone Age in what is now Western Cameroon, four children who perished before their prime were buried in a natural rock shelter. Now, thousands of years later, an analysis of the ancient DNA found in their bones has revealed secrets about the people who lived there many millennia ago, according to the new study. Uh, perhaps most surprise the most surprising findings of these children, uh, these children are not related to modern day Bantu speaking cultures that reside in the region today. I'm going to repeat that. Perhaps the most surprising finding is that these children are not related to the modern day. Bantu speaking cultures that reside in the region today. The researcher said, rather, the Stone Age children are genetically closer to present day hunter gatherer groups of Central Africa, which are not related to Bantu speaking groups. The researchers found the realization and others, including that a previous unknown ghost population contribute genetically to the people who live in Africa today, is shedding light on what is still the most genetically diverse region for humans in the world, the researcher said. And I will leave links to this article. Uh, I found other uh, similar articles, and it's funny it's funny that this isn't necessarily being talked about the way you thought it might. And I, I think there's some reasons for that. Um, for a long time, uh, we've heard the different uh, stories from the, the, the different people groups that are within Africa. Many of them, especially in West Africa, talk about how they came from other parts of Africa or the Middle East. And uh, if you do the uh, if you do sort of like the genetic uh, history of following uh, these people as far as how they travel, you'll you'll find that most African Americans uh, we cluster uh, with uh, people who I believe are the E Hapla group, and if you look at you know, specifically E one B one A. Uh, and E1B1B are the two major African lineages. And, uh, you know, if you listen to what's being said here in this article, 
the present day people who inhabit these lands who are E1, B1A carriers, who are the people that we descend from, we aren't related to the people who were there thousands of years ago, which means we came from somewhere else, right? So where where do we come from? I think uh, we come from uh, somewhere in the uh, eastern, maybe eastern, northeast Africa, somewhere around there. I believe that possibly um, we came from East Africa and then inhabited what was the Green Sahara and uh, the Middle East. I, I believe that we were in those areas um, and then we spread out. But now you have to also understand that there has been migrations back and forth between people uh, for, on Africa, in Africa and outside of Africa for thousands of years. And, um, you know, I think you're talking about layers of people mixing over time. And the, the funny thing is that now you're, you're starting to get a clear understanding, with, especially with these haplogroups, you know, E1B1A, E1B1B uh, have the same father. Now, people who carry E1B1B can be very black. They could be dark skin or they could be um I don't want to say white, but they could be light skinned. They can be very light skinned people from the Middle East or North Africa. And it, it really does boggle your mind because then it, it, you start to understand, well, then, OK, if these people uh, descend from the same stock, the same lineage, you know, then. How much does skin color really mean? I mean, is skin color just a factor more so of separation in, in terms of like, you know, if you have if you have two brothers, right, one brother goes left, the other brother goes right. And the one brother intermarries with people who may look different from himself. The other brother may marry with people who look more like him. So as those as those two lines sort of uh, stay apart and and intermarry within those groups, uh, skin color and phenotypes change, but that doesn't that doesn't negate the fact that they are linked genetically to a common ancestor, and I think that's what we see here. Uh, especially when you're talking about our specific stock, E1B1A. Um, and when you look at, especially, you know, the Jews, the Israelites are, uh, are haplogroup E carriers. This is fascinating stuff to me, man. Uh, and I've, I've found some other articles that I'm going to be uh, doing some videos on um, in regards to sort of like the same topic in and around the same topic. And I feel like I'm starting to get the story of what what's going on you know i feel like i'm starting to get a clearer picture especially with uh, when you match up what's written in the scriptures in the text it's making a lot of sense to me um but yeah check out this article man uh and i'm also going to be doing 23 and me uh genetic test i'm going to be ordering that real soon and doing a video on that so I can get an even deeper dive into um, my haplogroups. Um, I I have the jet match video. I probably should do another jet match video to kind of show that even more because I feel like, uh, or at least I was told by some of the other uh, brothers that um, the the twenty uh, three and Me. Um, 23 and me test will help me understand my jet match results. And if you remember on my jet match results, I I did show some affinities to um, Western Semitic speaking peoples. Now that would be like, you know, Jews or, or Middle East, or, or should I say uh, Arabs? Uh, it didn't say Arabs. It just said Western Semitic. So I, I have to figure out what that says, but um, yeah, man, um, this is this is some deep stuff, you know. Especially look at the Limba tribe and and 
and they're uh, showing a they show a genetic direct genetic lineage uh, to Israel. So, yeah, man, there's, there's a lot of stuff. All right, people be blessed. I hope you find this information informative. Peace.